Hey everyone, and welcome back to this kind of low key Sunday um, video that we're doing here. So if you guys didn't know already, in CK Productions, we released our Among Us Logic in Real Life video based on the, uh, the pretty popular game right now. It's actually honestly pretty fun. I, I, I enjoy playing it a lot. And so we kind of did this sort of spur of the moment since it's really popular right now, we decided to go and make this Among Us Logic video. So I wanna go in and I wanna break down one of the shots here and show you guys how I did the visual effects for this video. Cause pretty much um, once you do it for one video, it's pretty much the same process for the rest of them. You know, it depends on whether or not you're gonna be doing like effects or um, other people are gonna be the shot or not. But let's start off, let's go ahead and do sort of a simple walk through here. So I'm gonna pick the effect where Pink is doing the uh, little Simon Says board here. Um, let's go ahead and open that up in After Effects. Now starting from scratch here, we have our green screen shot of Joe here in a little uh, you know space outfit with the amazing Tupperware uh, goggles. Um, the first step, obviously what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go and we're gonna do a green screen effect to get rid of the green screen behind him. And if you guys haven't watched already, you should check out the uh, the green screen tutorials I've done a little earlier on back when the this, uh, this channel was called something different, but um, we're gonna go over it again. So using key light here, um, we're gonna switch it over to combine matte modes so we can see the white and the black. The stuff that's white is the stuff that stays, the stuff that's black is the stuff that goes in this context. So pull these clip blacks, these clip whites till pretty much everything encompassing his body here is in white and everything behind it is in black. And the next step we're gonna do is, we can kinda see the green bleed on the edge here. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is just do a quick little shrink here. You know, minus two should be okay. And then soften the edges a little bit. We do that, I do that pretty much for every type of green screen clip that we even do, even if it's not, you know, bleeding that much. So next step here, obviously we have, um, since it's the pop out green screen, we have the edges of the screen here. So we're gonna wanna mask that out as well. Ooh, that was tough. Uh, okay, so, and then we have basically our isolated clip of Joseph here. Um, next step, obviously, because we're, he's gonna be the pink character, um, what we did was everyone was wearing a red outfit here and what we did, we did, we do a color swap. So if we do change to color, put it on here, grab the color we want to change, and then pick a color we want it to go to. Now, something to address here, what you might have noticed in the actual video itself, certain colors that we picked ended up taking some of the skin tone with it and lips. And you can honestly, you can see in this case, it's kind of taking some of uh, some of Joe's lips here for sure. Cause obviously there's skin tones and the, and the lips. But if you look at something like the purple and the yellow and stuff, those uh, were a little bit more drastic when they changed, you know, uh, just because of how the color science is when they do the, uh, when it does the calculations here in the effects. So um, basically in those situations, um, it's best to kind of roll with it, I'd say. If you're running in the kind of situation like I did, basically, you know, you have two options. You can go and you can individually kind of mask out every single face and isolate the, you know, the color effect and stuff, but who's, who's really got time for that? I don't have time for that, seriously. Or you can just kind of roll with it. So basically, instead of looking, instead of making it look like uh, the characters had diseases, especially the yellow one, I just basically, you know, for the ones that weren't working with the skin tone, weren't really working with the skin tones, I just pulled up the hue higher to make their entire skin tone that color as well. And I think it's pretty funny that way, honestly. So yeah, faced with situations like that, your best bet is probably just going to like roll with it, especially if it's like a comedy, silly film. So moving on, uh, we need to pick a background for him. And, and I was able to collect a bunch of backgrounds using a Shutterstock account and it's great because they're all like really high quality renders that people have done for, you know, spaceships and stuff. Um, so I think I picked this kind of cool hallway here. I like it because it has like the computer screens in the background and there's gonna be like a computer screen in this shot here. Uh, when setting up these uh, shots, it's always good if you can, especially for green screen, 
to make uh, to, to make a little bit of depth in the scene. If you kind of have a hallway and you can see rooms back here and stuff, that always works pretty well. It works a little better than just, you know, putting kind of the solid wall behind him. Any adds a little bit more composition to the shot because you have like him over here, you got the screens back here. You know, there's a lot of places for your eye to go, whereas something if I lift it right here, um, maybe zoomed it in a bit, there's not a ton of places for your eye to go. You see the stuff immediately back here, but there, if you do it this way, there's a lot more kind of planes of things happening. Planes here, planes here, not airplanes, like, you know, like planes, the other planes, you know. So next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sell a little bit of um, the, the lens here by doing some depth of field. So just adding some blur to the background. It looks better than being kind of completely flat here. Everything is too, everything's too sharp and in focus and you need something kind of to focus on here. So obviously that's gonna be the character. What I do is we're gonna pre-comp both of these, both the subject and the background. And then we're gonna do this important step here. We're gonna do a light wrap around here. Like I've kind of mentioned before. So the light wrap composes three different effects here. So we're gonna do Gaussian blur. It used to be fast blur, it doesn't exist anymore. Set map. And set map, we're actually gonna duplicate. And channel blur. Channel blur, we're gonna put in the between these guys here. So, for set map, I'm gonna pick both of those and we're gonna pick the, the dude in the middle, Mr. Joe. And you can already see there's, there's like a, there's an edge around here, but the thing is, we don't see Joe, we just see the edge. So we, do, we fix that by just inverting this first set map. I can't say I can explain like all of the science behind how this works, but you know, it works. It works. Um, and then we can sort of see the kind of light wrap we're doing here. So we can kind of um, mess with it a little bit. We can make it a little more blurry on the sides, help it blend in with the background a bit more. The alpha blurriness here in channel blur helps kind of shows you how much it's wrapping around the character. Here now, it, it, we have it here, but it doesn't look quite right because it just kind of looks like we just, you know, blurred and feathered the edges too much. So all we have to do is change this to screen mode and it looks so much better now. Before, after, before, after. Very nice. Last step here. So we're gonna make the uh, little uh, grid screen that he's making. So easy enough. You can just start with uh, doing a kind of a solid here. Pick kind of, a, we can even color pick from the, from the background here if we wanted to. One of these sort of sci-fi blue colors here and have it have sort of that, you know, Oh, yikes, that was a weird voice crack. Um, have one of those kind of light blue edges and we make a little square here. Make a little square. And we're done. No, we're not done. Okay, so basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna set up a game here where there's a little, like, like in the shot, there's a little light that pops up and he hits the light. So let's first kind of Put this in screen mode so we can see behind him and see how it's actually gonna look. And let's take a look where he ends up hitting. So he hits here first. Let's go ahead and make a little color patch there. Sort of grab, so sort of that bright blue. And then disable it here. Make a little mask. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna feather it do that, we're gonna feather it, make it look all glowy, and then screen. Perfect. Boom. So we'll have it show up before he hits it because it shows him where to hit. Do a little opacity here. It's like, oh, move back a little bit. It's like, hit this spot. Yay, you hit it. Okay, and then you hit it and it goes away. Easy enough. Boop. He goes over here. Go ahead and just copy that. And then we'll just move the second one over here. Easy enough. Boop, boop. Last one he hits here. 
where exactly would that be the top one or the bottom one? I'm gonna go with the top one. But anyway, you got you guys get the point. Um, the last step I want to do with this is I want to make this entire um, little little grid here its own composition. I'm gonna make it glow, add some effects to it. So make it if I pull these together, call it grid, gird, call it grid, grid, call it grid. Pull that together. Uh oh. What happened here? Why can't we see it anymore? This happens when you bring stuff together in a pre-comp. When it makes a new pre-comp, it automatically puts it to normal mode. All you have to do is go ahead and make it back in the screen and you're totally fine. The last step I'm gonna do is gonna add the glow here. Add a little bit of glow. Always good to bright, bring up the radius and the glow. And kind of pick where I want the threshold to be. The threshold prioritize kind of different color channels. And I kind of want it to be less, a little less intense, a little more subtle. And then you have it, there's our effect. You know, it didn't really take much time. Obviously the last steps you would do when you bring them back to Premiere, you can do it here. You do a color grade over this and, you, and I put in the crop bars for this one to make it look more cinematic and stuff. But you know, that's essentially what it was for each shot, kind of going in and doing this process, adding whatever extra elements are in the scene and creating a background for it. Pretty simple process. So if you guys like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and look forward for new videos. I post twice a week. I um, do a lot of these kind of VFX breakdowns, talk a little bit more about editing and filmmaking and other tutorials in that realm. And feel free to comment down below if there's any other behind the scenes stuff that you guys are interested in looking for, or if you have any questions about how this stuff kind of works. With that, I'll see you guys for the next video. Bye everyone.